Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Guys, before we get into this video, I'm gonna need y'all to like, comment, and subscribe. If this is episode three of my self podcast, and guys, I'm feeling so depressed. So depressed. So fucking depressed. That's why y'all hear it in my tone. really feel down bro I haven't been eating I haven't been sleeping I, I'm tired I'm just yesterday was the first time I actually went to sleep my dog passed away y'all and I have not been taking it well my stress level is high it was my sister's birthday yesterday. No, we did my sister's birthday. My sister's birthday was Friday. My dog passed away on my sister's birthday. And we went to Big Kahuma, all the way, or Kahula, whatever, all the way to New Jersey, two hour drive. And guys, it was nice in there, but it's too damn expensive and it and is. They bathroom is filthy, it's horrible. It's hard. I mean, I wouldn't go back to that place. I wouldn't go back. Like, it was nice. The rise was nice and everything, but they just made this seem more better on Instagram, if you know what I mean. Way better than what it is, and it's not. You know, they were supposed to have a birthday party table for my sister when we got there. There was nothing set up. It was very unprofessional. And I'm telling the lady that she's like, oh, oh we, we're going to do it. And I felt so bad for the girl because walking back and forth trying to set up the table. And she had this wagon. And I'm thinking to myself, why you don't bring the tablecloth, the, the tablecloth, the the plates, the food, everything one together on that wagon. This lady walked back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, bringing two things at a time. Like she bought the tablecloth. She bought the the flyer like uh no the paper that's a happy birthday samina from big kahuma she bought the paper out and then she going back and forth to bring the juice the soda the water back and forth one at a time look down like i feel bad for this girl i really do yeah but like i said that place is very unprofessional because when we got there nothing was on the table and all we saw was a sign that said happy birthday samina from big kahuma the same sign they put on the table. And they wanted $500 for a party table that wasn't even set up. <sighs> My mother was like, what, what did we get? What did we get out of? <sighs> it was a mess. It was a mess. And I was a mess. Because I was barely barely there i wasn't even there i was in a whole different space and my own land at that place i just went for my sister but i really i didn't want to go i wanted to stay home and be depressed but i'm like let me get out the bed let me do something i stay here this is gonna be a lot of negative thoughts in my head um like um like just a lot of things and um I was just like, let me get out. And I'm happy I got out. I'm happy I got out because I did have a good time. The rise, everything. I did have fun on the rise. But I had my little moments where I was just crying. Crying to myself and crying on the way there. To the point I was making my mom nervous while she was driving because that's how bad it was just bothering me. Like, I'm not taking this well. Like, I had people that didn't even reach out to me. And they're supposed to be family. And they seeing that I'm posting stuff. And I'm, I'm, I'm hurt. Like, they seeing I'm posting stuff about my dog. They didn't even reach out to me to say, oh, how you doing? Da, da, da. But when stuff happened to them, I reach out to them. That's what I'm saying. Now, like, I'm cutting off a lot of people. I'm not, even if it's family, I'm cutting off a lot of people. Like, I'm, t I'm writing in my story. I'm saying, like, oh, I'm not feeling well. I'm the, don't even reach out just looking and being nosy. No matter if we didn't talk in years, when stuff like this happened, you you supposed, I don't know, that's just my nature. I reach out and be like, yo, I don't care if I haven't spoken to this person in years. Like, like you good? Because you don't know what nobody's thinking. 
Nobody's thinking. But then when something really happened to a person, they want to have, they want to cry and boo-hoo. But they see a person going through something, they don't reach out and say, oh, you okay? You good? I'm all, at least say your condolence. People didn't say they condolence, but watching my stuff. But watching me. But, but watching what I post. Fuck that, yo. I'm, I'm, I know that I'm working on myself. I'm working on healing. I'm trying to get connected to God. I'm trying to. But part of me, a big part of me is like, nah, I'm done with, like, for real, for real. I'm done with a lot of people I used to be done with. I'm good rocking by myself because that's how I feel. I've always been like that. I always rock with myself harder than anybody. I don't give, give up what nobody felt about me. What nobody felt about me. I don't need friends. Friends is a plus. My mother told me that at a young age. And I'm happy that my mother told me that. And I'm happy that I do what the fuck I do. I pop out a little bit and I leave the scenes. Like, I'm very rare. I'm very rare, baby. It's only one of me. You know, so. I'm just happy I move how I move. Because I move like that. But, yeah. And I'm just honestly freaking hurt. Hurt. I cried while I was in the shower just now. I, I, I'm, like, trying not to cry on camera. Because this shit is just ridiculous. And then I'm in a place right now. I'm in a hard predicament because I have resentment towards somebody that's close to me. I'm in a hard predicament. It's like, and this has some, this has totally something to do with something different. But imagine somebody make, this is the thing about it. Imagine somebody make a mistake, right? And The mistake hurt so bad. And it was a mistake and it hurt so bad. That's a tough position. That's a fucking tough position right there. And I'm just looking at the situation like I'm really in one of the toughest positions in my life. It's like, even though I feel like life is tests, like God give us all testers. I'm starting to realize that. <laughs> I'm slowly starting to realize that life is really about God giving us tests and seeing how and seeing how we maneuver through the tests. You know what I'm saying? How we, you know what I'm saying? Because I really see it that it is. It's like wow, you know, we all gonna get tests one day. We all and and you know what? Think about it. We all gonna die in this earth. But it's about how you die. And the pain still feel the same way. It's still going to feel the same way. Anybody that's going through something where I'm going through, just a little spirit. It's going to feel the same way. Like, I was so angry. Like, I got my baby. I prayed for my baby. I put all for my baby. I laid down in his bed with him. Like, that floor hurt my back. And I laid down on the floor with him. My baby looked me in my eyes. He heard, you know, he was uh, aware of his, he was aware. Praise, when he looked at me, he was looking all over and then looked at me. So, I, you know, they say dogs could see angels. They could see spiritual things that we can't see. Like when my dog used to bark for some reason, maybe it's because he freaking saw things that I couldn't see around this. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like when... I was talking to him, he was looking at me, he was looking all over, he was looking at angels. And at that time, they was telling him, like, you gonna be okay, like, you good where you at, you good where you at. So I do feel like my dog is at peace. I'm just not at peace at what would happen. I'm not at peace at the situation. I'm at very angry at the situation. I'm very, I feel like things could have been avoided. Things could have got, I mean, not avoided, I'm using the wrong words. Things. I can't, you know, I just take back that stuff as far as things could be avoided or, or the thing that I was about to say. It's because when it's your timing, it's your timing. So it's not about things could be avoided. It's not about that because how are you going to avoid something when it's your time? It's your time. We don't know when it's our time. So how can we say, oh, things could be avoided? Things could do. We don't know. And plus, it's just weird because I do look at it from a, a space of like everything do happen for a reason. You know what I'm saying? But who wants to hear everything happen for a reason when you actually going through it? 
You know what I'm saying? When you actually going through a pain, you don't want to hear, well, everything happens for a reason. And it's just, I'm just not taking it well at all. But my friend, Lauren, I love her to death. I love her. That's my sister. That's the only person I really deal with. <laughs> I really deal with one person. Really one. Well, two. Two. My friend, Didi. My homies. My two homies. Everybody else is clipped. They clip. I don't look back at nobody. I keep, I move forward. Once I clip you, I move forward. Best believe that. What we looking back for? Time is just keep going. Right? So, it's just crazy. It's crazy. Like, I had enough situations. <laughs> enough of fake friends. I feel like I, I've been through the whole fake friends thing. I've been through it. I, Every one of them. But you want to accuse me of messing with your boyfriend? You want to cut me off for that? Bro. The one that talked about your house. Talked about things that was secretly. That you would never. Never think they'd talk about at that moment. But trust me they would. So watch your circle. Because your circle definitely tell you a lot about yourself. Like I was. Your circle. I, and, 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 and you know what I say? Well, it tell you a lot about yourself. Because I mean, in like, it tell you that you don't pay attention. That's what I mean. Because I was in none of those things to them. I was none of those things to them. Yeah, it had triggered my asthma. When I went down and I would have splashed in my face like that. I was just so scared going through that dark tube. It was dark. So, I came up. I went on a couple rides. The next thing I know, my anxiety started to get... It started to go more like I just started to just assume that I was having an asthma attack, you know, and I did. I was having a mini asthma attack. It was mere, it was minor, I'm sorry, it was minor. And yeah, I went on a couple slides and I felt like I was leaving a lot when I when I got off that. And I called I, my mom. I told my mom that she walked me to the car. She walked me to the, I'm walking to the outside. I told her, and then we. It was an officer out there, so she had called the ambulance. We had to tell her what happened. She called the ambulance, and it, my and it was like the ambulance was right there. It was right there. Thank God that it wasn't far. It was right like five minutes away. But they did take like a little minute, but it wasn't that long. It was just like in my head because like, I was rushing. Like they need to have him come. They need to have him because I was just like. I felt my chest like popping out more, like my breathing, I mean, it was like, like, so. Yeah, and I took a treatment in the ambulance and they put the stuff on me, they put the stuff on me and they told me that um, I'm under a lot of stress and that's what's causing my asthma and I need to drink water, eat and stuff, so. I told him the situation, he was like, but you just have to take care of yourself. You gotta take care of yourself, even though the situation appeared, and you know, you gotta take care of yourself. After that, I stayed for a little while. I took my, well, I took my treatment, it helped me. They was like, oh, you wanna go to the ambulance because the treatment that we give you, it might be temporary. It might not work if you're staying for another three hours, or whatever. I told us, I decided, to see and I took the risk of like not go I took the risk of not going to the ambulance not go I mean I took the risk of not going to the hospital and it helped me it, it, it helped me a lot because as I was feeling better I was feeling better and I was able to stay for those for those three hours thank God thank God mm-hmm I got home, I had a little, it started wheezing a little bit, tiny bit, I took my pump, felt better. And I forgot my pump, I was just so tight cause I was rushing everything because we had to be at Big Columba at one o'clock and we left out here like around nine. So I was rushing, I forgot. I know I'm always supposed to have my pump with me, but my mind wasn't there, I wasn't, I'm not there. Even right now as I'm talking, I'm not here you know what i'm saying 
Um, I'm trying to take it easy. Like, man, I'm not talking to God. And when you don't talk to God, you're never going to be peace. You're never going to fully have that peace within you. When I was saying on my last video, like, God is my friend. I said, God is my friend. And I'm shutting God out right now. I'm upset. I'm hurt. I wouldn't even say I'm upset. I would go back to just being hurt. As just hurt. Just hurt. Maybe my skin is look like it's glowing though. <laughs> but yeah. Yep. I was happy. I, I, my friend, like, I was surprised my friend came out to see me. Like I told, I told my friend what happened. She came. My friend Lauren. She was like, I'm coming to your house. I'll be there in five minutes. And you know, you need friends like that. That's not just gonna say they could don't they gonna come up and pull up on you and they're gonna check on you. They're gonna see if you're good. That's how you know you got a real friend. Because they're gonna see if you're good. You know, you got some people that send their condonance, but don't never reach back out after that. My friend been reaching out to me since day one. Day one, checking on me, see if I'm okay. I, I need friends like that. And I don't have I don't have a lot of friends like that. But I'm realizing I don't have a lot of friends like that. But these are, it's like, you don't need a lot. You don't need a lot of friends to have that. You have that. Like, it's okay to have one, two friends. It's okay. It's okay. And you know, they say, they say hard times show you who you are. During these moments, they show you. They show you who your friends are. They show you a lot who your family is. Please, who your family is. As I come from a family, my family is a backwards. They're backwards. They're dysfunctional. They do more for an outsider than they do for their own family. So, I come from that. I come from that. My family is dysfunctional in any prayer. They need prayer. They holding on to a lot of things. Even they they involve their kids in the situation. That's what I think is sad about it. Because my my cousins, some of my cousins, we have awkward relationships. It's just we I see them, I say hi to them. That's pretty much it. We ain't try to build nothing with them. We just say hi cause we cousins. Over something that happened between a parent. A parent. And they hold that grudges. And it's understandable because I understand. I totally understand how they go because that's how I am on 204. My mom too, sometimes. And I'm looking at it like, but the situation really ain't got nothing to do with you. So you holding off that anger that you got and you building off that anger because it's your parent, because how your parent feel. We getting grown. You got to let go how your, you know what I'm saying? You got to let go. So it's weird. It's very weird. <laughs> It's very weird. My family is very weird. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. There's a lot of them that's weird. A lot. A lot of them that's weird. That has. That do that. That do that. Even down to the. The the olders. You know what I'm saying? The elders. Like the head. Actually I would say. The head. You know what I'm saying? The head is even worse. If you know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They even worse. They continue the cycle. They don't know how to, you know what I'm saying? And they quick to judge somebody else when their household is not even together. Their household is way, it's not even together. But you quick, they have a lot of favoritism in this family. You know, I watch people. I watch. I watch. And that's why, that's another reason why I don't really, I'm not pressed for friends. That's another reason why I'm not pressed for friends. Cause like I go through shit in my own family, bro. My family tell me how grimy people could be. My family show me how, you know what I'm saying? When you look at things, you don't even be pressed for people no more. You don't be, but you don't go, if you by yourself, you like, that. I'm good by myself. You know what I'm saying? You have that type of energy. So if you know, you know. Yeah, I'm learning a lot through this whole process. I'm gonna try to talk to God. I'm gonna try to talk to him. I'm going to try because I haven't been feeling well. I was talking to my friend, Jakeba. I was telling her, like, I'm not feeling well, sis. I might have to check myself into a mental hospital. That's how well I'm not feeling. I'm not okay. When you're not okay, it's you're just not okay. We had him since he was a baby, y'all. 
a baby.